Well, hello and welcome to a 2017 edition of Zany Baseball. I am Zane. I am Zane. And it's time to preview the 2017 season. It is here. Opening day is here. Opening day is here. The opening week of the season is here. And it's time for another season of baseball where we're coming off of, well, after 108 years, the Chicago Cubs have won the World Series. Do you think that people thought that? I mean, at the beginning of the season, they knew that it was a young team. They knew that uh, they had a lot of young guys that were ready to come in and uh, just win ball games, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know that anybody knew that the Cubs would win the World Series. They knew that the Cubs were going to be really good, and they did not fail to uh, exceed those expectations. And so, uh, you know, they'll be due to win another one in, uh, I guess, what, 21, 24 or so. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are thinking them uh, to win again this year. They're uh, really back to back. Not, yeah, I've not heard, every one hundred and eight years. No, I've heard a lot of a uh, lot of commentators saying that their favorites to win it again are the Cubs. So uh, definitely is another good team. I mean, they haven't lost much. They're they're still the big team that they are. They got a lot of their young guys, and uh, they're certainly still a contender. <laughs> Well, let's start in the National League then. I mean, I think last year, when I, w I went back and watched last year's uh, preview edition of the National League, I think we hit it pretty much right on, and I don't think much has changed from last year. We thought about the NL East as being very top-heavy with the Nationals and with the Mets. We figured the Marlins would be somewhere in the middle and that the Phillies and the Braves wouldn't be too good, and that's pretty much how it turned out. Mm -hmm. We figured that the Cubs and Cardinals and Pirates would all be good, and the Brewers and Reds wouldn't be, and that's kind of how it kind of hashed out. And in the, the West, the Dodgers, the Giants. Uh, Giants, we weren't sold on the Diamondbacks, and then the Diamondbacks did not have a good year, and then the Padres and the Rockies. And so uh, I almost feel like 2017 looks a little bit like 2016 all over again. I would agree with that. Um, I would say that there's been a lot of changes as the offseason went on. The Braves had probably the big remake that the Marlins had a few years ago with getting their new stadium, getting a lot of big names. Uh, you know, they got R.A. Dickey, they got uh, Bartolo Colon, they picked up Brandon Phillips uh, later in the offseason. Uh, they got Dansby Swanson, uh, the number one prospect uh, coming up. He made his major league debut last year, uh, is looking good. Um, they still have Freddie Freeman, who's you know always been a great player. So, you know, they have a good team, you know. Right. Yeah, as, but, like, well, you just said a lot of old guys and then a couple young guys, you know what uh, I mean? Like, yeah. so, I mean, I think their future to me is bright, but I don't I don't know that I expect them to be, like, contending this year, do you? I don't know. I think they'll, I think they'll make a run for it. Um, their first game uh, didn't pan out very well, uh, losing, I believe, 6-1 to the Mets. And that's a rival of theirs, you know, and the Mets are a strong team as well. And uh, you're expecting to see that with their great pitching staff. Right. So I think that's probably going to be the Braves' biggest uh, contender, especially uh, is this year is the Mets and also the Nationals as well. But I think especially the Mets uh, with their pitching staff. Well, that's what I think. I mean, I think the Mets and the Nationals are the cream of the division again. Um, I think, you know, I think the Braves might improve, but I don't, I don't see them contending at all. I think that... In fact, I think, um, you know, it's it's interesting to see where the Mets are going to be. Like, they have really good pitching. Syndergaard and Mats and Harvey looks like he's maybe, maybe ready to have a back. DeGrom. DeGrom. Lugo is having some inflammation issues, I guess, after the WBC. So I guess w w it remains to be seen where, you know, how their depth is. But certainly the quality of their pitching is really good. And... Um, that's why I'm picking, I think, the Mets to win that division. You think so? Yeah, listen, and I think the rest of their team is, continues to be solid. I think I think the pitching is what carries them ultimately over the Nationals in the end. Yeah, I could see that as well. And I think the Nationals, you know, again, they have a strong team. Uh, they, they're they relying a lot on Strasburg this year. They got uh, their, their pitching staff is also good. It's not all to the depth, as you said, to the Mets. Right. So I think... Uh, you know, the Nationals are definitely going to have to rely a lot on Strasburg to get a win every fifth day. Uh, sure, and especially, sure, it's going to be great yeah. again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the Nationals are going to be really good again. I think Murphy continues to assert himself as a really good player. 
Um, I think Bryce Harper is going to have a monster year this year. Last year, not so much. He had a huge spring training. He just, I think he's going to bounce back and look like the Bryce Harper of old. I think he's going to have a ton of home runs this year. I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, has over 30 closing in on 40 home runs this year. I think that's the kind of year that Bryce Harper's going to have. And I think um, that offense is going to power them. I think they're going to be, and Dusty Baker's a good manager, and I think they're going to be near the top. I think the Mets and the Nationals are going to go back and back, back and forth throughout the entire year. But I think the, the Mets kind of take them over the hump. I do think the Marlins are going to have a good year. Um, I think that there was something that happened last year um, with the death of Jose Fernandez. I think that got into Giancarlo Stanton. I think he um, has a perspective on life that's different than maybe it had been in the past. And I think he's poised to have a really huge year. And so mm-hmm. I think the I think the Marlins are going, you know, Christian Yelich. You got, I mean, D. Gordon. D. Gordon, a lot of quality there still. And so... That's why I don't think the Braves are really going to compete yet. I think they're the, they're they're in a division that's just too too strong. In fact, I even think the Phillies are, might be a little bit better. I mean, they started pretty good last year, but I think um, it's a really good division. I think the, I think the Mets. I picked the Mets to win it. I think that the Nationals are definitely going to be a wild card, and they're going to be going back and forth. Both of them are going to have mid mid ninety wins at the end of the year. Yeah, I think that's more. That's a lot like a AL East sort of thing, where like every team is good to their own extent. Right. But there maybe is like two or three teams that are the big contenders in sure, that. Right. So I think that the National League East is probably going to be the most competitive this year, yeah. in, in my opinion. I mean, just looking at the, the first day or whatever, the Mets getting a win, uh, the Nationals getting a win off of a uh, newly picked up uh, Adam Lind mm-hmm. uh, home right. run. Um, Marlins, uh, I believe they took a loss. See, I'm trying to think. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at. It. I'm not sure. I I would say that uh, I knew. I know the Mets uh, pulled off a win against the Braves, and uh, and I think that I think again, like I said before, that's going to be what it is for the Braves. If they're gonna if they're gonna have to contend, they're gonna have to beat the Mets. So, I don't think they're ready to do that yet. I think they're a year away. I think they have a lot of really good young players, but I think they're a year away. Okay. What about out west? So out west, kind of the same thing. Dodgers and Giants, kind of as cream of the crop. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people like the Rockies. They think that the Rockies are a team on the rise. Obviously, you got Nolan Ariando, um, you got Trevor Story. Mm-hmm. You know, you got some good players there in, in in Colorado. And so I guess you know, do you see? You know, uh, and even Arizona. I think I think Arizona might have a little bit of a bounce back year. Obviously, they had a lot of expectations. They got a lot of free agents last year. You know, Grinky's velocity is down, but is he going to be? Is he going to learn how to pitch with his decreased velocity? I mean, I think there's opportunity for that. And I think uh, you know, you still have Goldschmidt there, and so you have a. Um, a and lot. also, also uh, Pollock is back after AJ a Pollock, year of right. not being that. I mean, he yeah, he got hurt right, at, right the last couple last week of spring training, I think, last year. And yeah, he missed the whole season. About. So that's that's a huge, it's a huge addition just through that injury. And so I think the Diamondbacks come back a little bit. I think the Padres are going to be bad, really, really bad. You think so? Really bad. That was that was another thing that I heard too. Like, I've seen so many things that. Uh, Will Myers is like the only good thing in San Diego anymore. Listen, I think they're going to be really, really bad. Like over 100 wins, bad for sure. 100 losses. Or 100 losses, bad. Excuse me. And so the question is, is the Dodgers the cream in that division? Are they the ones? You know, are you looking at a, you know, uh, you know, are you looking at the Dodgers to win that division? I don't know. I think the Giants are the stronger team and. After seeing the historic day of Madison Bumgarner on opening day, right, and still managing not to get a win, but still, I mean, he pitched a gem, right. You know, he, you couldn't you couldn't have asked for a better uh, opening day start from Madison Bumgarner. And then on top of that, he took a walk, he worked a count from Zach Greinke, and then he hit two home runs, one of which was an absolute bomb, yeah. which we couldn't believe he <laughs> hit it that far. We were watching, like, he's like, you got to see this, and he shows me the replay on the phone, and it, it just was like, it made a loud noise. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a sweet sound. Yeah. So that was kind of our big thing, you know, baseball is back. You right. Know? And so Madison Bumgarner is, uh, 
he's going to be really strong. And I think, you know, that was a rough loss for the Giants opening day. Right. But, you know, I don't think that's going to carry over too much longer. No, I mean, like, you know, it's kind of like uh, not a good feeling for – Giants fans who's had a lot of problems in the bullpen, but you know we obviously know a lot about Martin Melanson. Mm-hmm. Um, if I recall, a couple of years ago he blew a save to the Tigers on opening day, and then came back to like save like thirty in a row. So yeah, I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's gonna be fine. I think it you know sometimes that little cutter takes a little bit of time to get as nasty as it will be, mm-hmm. but I don't. He's not gonna have any problems. He'll Melanson's probably have. I'm, I'm assuming he's going to have 35-plus saves, maybe yep. even 40-plus. 40 so I'm not worried about him. I guess, you know, the question is, you know, they've been doing a lot of tinkering with their lineup. Um, Bruce Bochy has been kind of moving the pieces around. I think another... I think they're concerned about scoring enough runs. I think another a key aspect to that is uh, Eduardo Nunez, hmm. I believe is his name. Uh, Speed Demon, uh, he stole... I don't know how many stolen bases he had uh, opening day, but I believe he went... I believe he went three for five and had two stolen bases. Right. So he's going to be a key part of that right. of that uh, scoring. You're going to try to manufacture more runs, you think? Yeah, I would think so. And I think Brandon Belt is due to have a good year. He had a decent year last year, but I think right. he could take that next step yep. and getting over the hump. Um, Brandon Crawford, right. you know, he played in the World Baseball Classic. Yep. Uh, he had a decent classic. Um, I'm assuming he'll be he'll be hitting for average this year. I'm assuming right. so. And, you know, he'll still be the amazing defensive shortstop that he is. Right. So, I like the Giants. That's probably one of my picks. Uh, I don't know if I'm sold on the Dodgers yet. I mean, they've, for two years in a row, they've smoked the Padres on opening day. Yeah, well, Clayton Kershaw being your opening start is a pretty good thing. Um, Justin Turner, I think it was, had a, just an amazing year. Or, or Corey. Um, Corey Seager. Corey Seager had, a, like, had an amazing year. Justin Turner, good player, I guess, and then, so I guess the question is, I don't know. So I mean, it, 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 so I think it seems like they're the the two top teams again with the Rockies closing and the Diamondbacks improving. I would say so, and I think another thing for the Dodgers as well is Jock Peterson. All right. Uh, didn't have a great year last year, but this is a year that he turns it around and really puts up his power numbers gets those up, and also starts hitting for a little more average, too, because he was not hitting for average much. He was either hitting a home run or striking out last year, essentially. Yeah. So that'll be a big thing to watch for uh, with the Dodgers. Um, and, yeah, like the uh, the Diamondbacks, what did I say last year? Shelby Miller trade. <laughs> Worst trade ever. Listen, you called it. You said it way back then, that that was a bad trade for the Diamondbacks. And you were proved right, at least on year one. I mean, and... I mean, obviously, the Braves have used that trade as the core of their future mm-hmm. with Dansby Swanson. But, yeah, I mean, you hated that trade from the beginning, and you've been proved right so far. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was another signing last year that you panned and thought was really bad that came in the NL Central, and that was Jason Hayward. You were like, Jason Hayward doesn't deserve. The multi mil- yeah. multi multi-million dollars that he's earning. Right, and, you know, he's, he struggled last year offensively. We knew he was a good defensive player, mm-hmm. but that's not worth $20 million a year or whatever he's getting. No. And so, um, you know, he struggled last year, and so much to the point they were taking him out of the lineup in the playoffs. And, yeah. And then the same kind of thing, you know, struggled. You know, he's trying to rework his swing. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. But, you know, you didn't like that from the very beginning. You, you didn't like the signing. I didn't like that signing. And I guess that's um, you know that leads us into the NL Central a little bit, you know. So the Cubs are the defending champs. Yeah. And um, and I think I suspect as, they'll be good again. As much as I hated that signing, um, the one story, uh, you know, Game Seven, you know, it's all hyped up. Rajay Davis hits a home run off of a Roldis Chapman right. to tie the game. Right. With two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning or whatever, and it's right. like you know how much more hyped up can you get? And then in the tenth inning, there's a rain delay. Right, just took the the like everything went away. Right. Like the hype that was a World Series Game Seven game just went out the window. I think for both teams, but Jason Hayward was a big part of that. He right. went into the locker room, he gave a big pep talk to the Cubs, and you know just gave them the you know, strength and, you know, told them, you know, we are in this, you know, we are the Cubs and, you know, we can win this. And right. they ended up doing it. And, right. you know, I think, you know, that was definitely 
you so know, there was maybe a leadership. Not, there was a leadership thing there. Yeah, it wasn't on field, but it was off the field, and that ended up, you know, helping them out a lot. Yeah, maybe not worth. Tw- well, maybe it was worth twenty million if hey, they won you, the World you Series. Ne- yeah, you, you know? never know. So, so they got seven more years of them. So yeah, we'll have to see how his uh, offensive numbers uh, go. We'll have to track that through the year. But do yeah. you think um, the Cardinals or the Pirates are going to be able to? I mean, I think. The Reds and the Brewers are not going to be good again. Reds are on the rebuild. Brewers are going to be a spoiler team as normal. I wouldn't see them being as awful as right. they maybe they were last year, but I think they'll definitely be a that's definitely a big spoiler team. Yeah, I was talking to my buddy, and he went to he was just at opening day at Miller Park, and you know it's a really young team. You know he was saying that that, that team's going to be really really good in like twenty twenty, but they're you know they're really young. The Brewers are yeah, super young. Super young. Yeah, I'd agree with that. In my so, opinion, right. I think that the Cardinals win the division. Really? I think I think that they're wow. well. Now we talked about the Cubs being so young last year, right? And now I think the Cardinals are on that swing here. Mm. Like you got Alemis Diaz. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget his name. Oh, um, Carlos Martinez, mm. opening day starter. Right. You know he shut down the Cubs opening day. You right. know they had to. Uh, win the game in uh, a Excuse. dramatic fashion yeah. or whatever, but you know he locked them up. You know right. he he contested with John Lester, and I going back to the Cubs now. John Lester's without David Ross, mm. and so now he's got to rely on Wilson Contreras, right. who is a, t- a completely different catcher. Right. So we'll have to see how that pans out for John Lester. I I put him on my fantasy team, but then I thought about it, and I'm like, well, he doesn't have David Ross. So, you know, right. we'll see how that has to how that works out. You know, I mean, Lester wasn't bad opening day, but I would say that um, there's definitely they're going to have to renew a connection with his catcher especially. Yeah, that's true. And I think Anthony Rizzo is going to have to play a big part of that as well, especially, you know, being his first baseman. Right. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how John Lester focuses throughout this year. Yeah, I think I was listening to uh, Baseball Tonight podcast. I was listening to Buster Olney, and he was saying that, um, Anthony Rizzo is going to be the guy that comes out to the mound to talk to Lester because Lester's pretty fiery and gets pretty emotional, and Ross was able to kind of channel that. And what what I think Buster only was saying is like that's going to be Rizzo's job. He's going to you know come in from first base to to provide that yeah. leadership and that sort of calm temper. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that, listen, I think Rizzo is really good. Mm-hmm. You know, the guy just crowds the plate. And just has great plate discipline. Um, and he hits the ball, too. And he smacks the ball around. And Bryant is great. And Schwarber's going to have a full season of Schwarber this year. Javi Baez, who's, you know, fiery as ever. And you got, um, uh, you got Russell. Your, Russell. You still have um, your one of your favorite players, Ben Zobrist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's a so it's, it's, Jake Arrieta. I yeah. mean, these the Cubs still stacked, still stacked. It's hard to go back to back, but I mean, the Cubs are stacked. I'm surprised to, to hear you say that you think the Cardinals are going to win the division, though. I, I, I've got this feeling that the Cardinals are going to do it. I think Adam Wainwright's going to have a great year. Um, yeah. I think Carlos Martinez is going to have a great year, especially yeah. you know coming off of that you know great opening day start. Mm-hmm. I think that was a big uh, confidence booster for him because right. Adam Wainwright has usually been the opening day starter, right. and then he got the call and you know he took full advantage of it. Right. So you know I think Carlos Martinez is going to certainly you know fulfill that role as a you know number one starter, and yep. I think his lineup behind him is going to do well as uh, you know as well. I mean. You don't have Matt Holliday anymore, uh, getting traded over, not traded, but uh, free, agent. free agent to the Yankees. Right. But uh, I still think that their offense is going to uh, continue to get through. And I think Randall Gritchick and uh, Steven Piscotti, right. Yadier Molina just got signed right. uh, to a mm-hmm. uh, few-year contract uh, yep. continuing. Um, so I think I think the Cardinals are still, you know, great team. I think they've probably even improved right. since last year. Well, what about the Buccaneers? I don't know. I mean, again, we get to this point in the season where it's like bias might take over, but I think the Pirates will do half decent. I don't know if they'll squeeze out a wild card spot. Uh, I feel like they have, they definitely have the potential. I think Josh Bell is going to be a big part of that, getting a full season of him, right. see if he can consistently hit, if he'll his power numbers get up there. Um, and I think Andrew McCutcheon has to have a bounce back year. 
I think he has to. I think you're going to see Polanco emerge this year. He had a really good World Baseball Classic. Yeah. I think you're going to see Polanco start to assert himself at an all-star level. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how he handles left field at PNC Park. I don't think he's got a great, you know, outfield instincts. It'll be interesting to see if he like continues to mature in that way and he's seeing things from a different perspective would be interesting. Starling Marte, obviously defensively as an outfielder, is is now uh, is getting his chance at center field. So he's an amazing outfielder. In left field, I saw something where he had the most runs saved over the last several years defensively. Wow. He's got a cannon for an arm. And so I think that's I think the outfield's gonna be really good. Um, I think Marte is going to have to hit for more power. And I think he yeah, only he had, had nine, nine home, home runs, runs last year. That was it. And I was that's the first thing I said this year. He's got to up his power numbers. He's got to hit over twenty home runs this year if he's going to if he's going to be a major contributor to the right. team. He's got to have more power numbers. I don't think they're. I think they're going to be a lot like last year. I think you're going to find them right around five hundred. They'll be in the wild card race. But I mean, I, you and I were watching the year last year. They got to within like. I think they got to even within a half a game, like and then they, in September, and then they lost like eight nine in a row. Or, nine in a row in September, which you can't do. No, I mean, I mean, at that point, right? We just knew that it was over. Right. When you lose nine games in September, you know you're not making the playoffs. You're not making the playoffs, especially weren't you weren't even in a playoff position. So no, you know they were like twenty games out of, the, of winning the division because the oh Cubs yeah were, the Cubs were just you know rolling people over and right. you know including the Pirates you know. Even towards the end of the season, so. So I don't, I don't. Unfortunately, I'm not optimistic about the Pirates right now. I don't. I think their pitching is okay, but I think not. their pitching is going to be better. I think now that Locke isn't in the rotation, it's not even on the team anymore. You don't have that right. inconsistency with him. Um, I think Cool, Cool, Nova, Tyon, Glasnow, Glasnow. I mean, I think it's a, it's I guess a good one to five, but. It'll have to... There's no great pitcher on that staff. That's the problem. Yeah. And I think that showed opening day as well as Cole kind of, you know, broke down there. You know, one bad inning, and that was all it took. Right. And, uh, you know, he threw batting practice to being being Benteni Benteni or whatever his name is. And, you know... He's probably going to be the rookie of the year, you know, in AL. He's definitely one of the guys to look for as far as rookie of the year, but... Listen, he's you know University of Arkansas product, product. He's you know highly talented, has huge power. Mm-hmm. I mean, Cole threw a 98 mile power pitch. It wasn't like it was batting practice, but you know, it's right down the middle. He crushed it. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think the Pirates have enough power. That's part of the problem. I think so too. Like I was even looking. Uh, you know, I got a magazine for uh, for opening day or whatever, and you know, I was looking through the Pirates. You know, statistics. Especially with Gong Gun, I mean, with, yeah, I mean, his he incident. might not be here all year, and that's the only guy that really has the capability of probably hitting thirty home runs. Consistent power. Yeah, right. Like we we have a lot of streaky power. Like Cervelli hits one home run a year. You know, Jaso might hit one every once in a while. Yeah, Bell might hit one. Every, I mean, we don't know. We don't know. Nobody, what the power there's nobody batting. Like. There's nobody batting three, four, five that you're fearing. No. Like Bryant or Rizzo, mm-hmm. exactly. or you know anybody. It's like it's just they, they don't have, you know, I don't know. So they I'm don't. They a, don't have that offensive presence that really strikes fear into a pitcher, right? And you know, really, you know, gets them on the edge. And you know, they don't really have that guy that you know you're confident in every time. Like I, I remember listening to somebody, I uh, forget, I don't know the broadcasters' names, but the Blue Jays broadcaster said. He said every time Josh Donaldson gets the play, he looks like he's going to hit a home run. And right. literally two seconds later, bang, right. you know, home run. So, you know, you don't have that presence on the Pirates, I don't think. Right. Well, I think we got to wrap up our uh, National League preview mm-hmm. with some uh, predictions. Yeah. So what do you have as far as uh, the three division winners, the wild cards, and who do you see winning, uh, winning it all in the National League? Well, I guess uh, probably start in the East. Uh, I like I like the Mets. I think the Mets will do well. Uh, I'm going to have them going going first. I think I'll have the Nationals. Um, I think I'm going to take the Braves slightly over the Marlins, and then the Phillies. Okay. Hmm. And then uh, in the Central, I'm going to say I'm going to stick with my guns. I'm going to say Cardinals, Cubs, 
Pirates, uh, Cubs with the number one wild card spot. Um, and then in the West, uh, we're going to take, I'm going to say Giants, Dodgers, um, Rockies, Diamondbacks, and uh, Padres. So we kind of got rained out there for a moment. Uh, we decided to do a little bit of an outside edition. I uh, guess that didn't quite work out, though. <laughs> All right, so where are you at? So, so I said um, I said Giants, Dodgers, uh, Rockies, uh, Diamondbacks, Padres for okay. the, uh, the West. For the West, and I think that second wild card spot is just definitely going to have to be a toss up between uh, Nationals, um, definitely the Dodgers. Uh, one of those two teams I'm thinking is going to be the second wild card spot. So okay, I'll take um, Mets. To win the East, the Nationals to take a wild card. I'll take uh, Marlins third, Braves then Phillies in the Central. I'll take the Cubs. I'll take the Cardinals in second. I'll take the Pirates in third. Brewers in fourth, Reds in fifth. And I'll take out West. I'm going to take the Dodgers, Giants, Rockies, Diamondbacks, and Padres. And then I'll take. Um, for the second wild card, I'm going to take the Cardinals. Okay. I mean, it sounds... Pretty it's a, close. Yeah, it sounds really close, so actually. So who overall is going to be your National League winner, do you think? Um, I'm taking the Mets. Taking the Mets? Yep. I think the Giants are going to... I think the Giants are going to go back and uh, prove that the... 2017. Well, the even streak doesn't have to continue. Now they can start up an odd streak. I guess you're right. So, I guess I guess I'll take the Giants. You're taking the Giants. Yeah. All right. Well, the Thunder rolls <laughs> here in Zany Baseball. That is our National League preview. Uh, I hope that you'll take time to watch. And if you liked what you saw, please give a like and please give a a comment on what your predictions are. Mm-hmm. And uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on any more Zany Baseball. Yeah, so we're going to try to keep doing it again every week in the season as we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get uh, to filling our American League preview here shortly. So uh, from the back porch here at Zany Baseball headquarters, I am Zane. I am Zane. We'll so see long you next for now. Time. Yeah.